Hello, everyone. The last game of the regular season, Lehigh, number 159. Mike and I will be there. It is a noon kickoff. We know you'll be there if you can't get there. Uh, that's what being a Lafayette fan is all about. Let's take a look at Lehigh. We're going to talk about Lafayette at the end this time, not so much at the beginning. Lehigh with a new coach, Kevin Cahill. That sometimes presents some problems for the opponents. Uh, obviously, uh, Tom Gilmore is gone. Uh, this this guy's been in football for a long time, 10 years at uh, Yale, so certainly uh, he has the experience. What he hasn't done, though, is he hasn't gone through a Lafayette-Lehigh game. And he hasn't gone through a Lafayette-Lehigh week yet, so we'll see what that's all about on campus, and there's so much energy around. And uh, But he's a very good coach, Kevin. Does a nice job and uh, you know has all that experience coming from Yale, and he was the coordinator there. And so you may have to look back at some of the film that he did there, but you do have 11 games to look at or 10 games to look at from Lehigh this year. Um, they've been struggling in certain areas, obviously up front with their offense and defensive line. Um, but they do play good defense, this team. They'll come after you. They make plays. they got some good linebackers. Um, but he's going to have to find a way to get these kids back up because I believe last week against uh, um, Colgate was probably the worst game they played all year. They were down 30 to nothing early. They didn't really have, have a response till the end, um, as Lehigh usually does at the end of games. But uh, it's going to be a tough situation to get these kids up and then keep them fired up for 60 minutes. That's the thing. Does he lose them if, if Lafayette jumps on top early? And that's probably the job of Lafayette is to get ahead early, maybe put a cap on this. They come in without a signature win, so this would certainly fall into that category should they get it. They're 2-8, and 1-4 and four with uh, wins over Bucknell and Merrimack, so no signature win there. The other thing about this football team is a lot of the players we're going to see that will play important roles in this game we have not seen. It's kids that have not played in this football game. Their quarterback is a sophomore. Their best running back is a, I'm sorry, their quarterback is a, yeah, a sophomore. Their best running back is a freshman. Uh, and they've got a lot of sophomores along the way everywhere else. So uh, they haven't experienced this game either. Yeah, and, and you got to you got to be able to understand how the game flows. And that's what we talk about a little bit on Inside the Huddle is controlling your emotions. Mm -hmm. Understanding that if you have a bad play or two or three or a bad quarter, the game's not over. So this is a very much a roller coaster, and both teams are going to come out flying high with emotion. Um, Lehigh obviously at home. This is their season. If they can win here to, uh, on Saturday, they can basically save their season. They can go into the spring feeling good about themselves. And for Lafayette, it's about finishing. It's really about finishing the job. And I think uh, you know the way they played last week against Fordham shows you that John Choxel's got his team in the right place. But a lot of these young kids are going to experience the crowd noise. Mm -hmm. They're going to experience the emotion. They're going to experience you know making a bad play, making a good play. How do you control your emotions to not have penalties as well, um, which can uh, uh, you know, uh, factor into a game. So uh, um, a lot of young guys out there, not just for Lehigh, but for Lafayette as well. Yeah, no more emotional for anybody except certainly the quarterback for Lehigh. Brayton Silbor is just a sophomore. He's thrown for almost 1,700 yards, 10 touchdowns. Mike, he's been intercepted 11 times. I think turnovers are going to be a key, certainly in this football game. And Lehigh has had a propensity to turn the ball over. Yeah, they have. 11 interceptions a lot. They put the ball on the ground a few times. Uh, we... Uh, you know, a situation where he's only completing 50% of his passes. Um, they're going to have to rely on their run game, and that's my opinion. They're going to have to get Yoder going. He's been fantastic, two 100-yard games in a row. He's got great speed, so you can't let him out, much like Jamar. Um, but you're going to have to be able to run the football if you're Lehigh. Maybe shorten this game a little bit. You cannot just give possessions back. Three and outs are going to hurt you. They're going to put pressure on your defense. They're going to get your defense worn down a little bit, and I think that's where Lafayette can uh, really take advantage of them. But for, for, for Silbor, control the game. Understand what you need to do. If you need to throw it away, do that. Don't throw it into traffic. Third down and seven plus are situations where they may just run the football or dump the football off, see if they can get a play there, uh, and then get a, a first down. But they need to control the line of scrimmage, which is going to be tough to do. Yeah, they've got young, a youngster in the backfield, as we mentioned, just a freshman in Luke Yoder. He's a local kid. Mike mentioned two, a couple 100-yard uh, games in a row. And a guy who is a veteran who has seen this ball game uh, throughout his career is Jack DiPietro. He's a senior. Uh, he uh, basically doesn't quite share the duties anymore with Yoder, but he certainly is in there for sequences for sure. Wide receivers, Jeffrey Jamil is a little scary uh, because he really has 38 catches. He's quick. He's only a sophomore. Uh, Connor Kennedy leads the team in uh, receiving the football, 40 catches, 429 yards. 
Defensively, Mike, they're really pretty solid defensively. Danucci, who is their linebacker, Nick uh, Peltekian, and Matt Spatney are all very good football players. Yeah, Spatnacki, Spat, Spatney gets after the quarterback, mm -hmm. and Danucci doesn't have a lot of sacks, but he's a guy's a tackling machine, and there's a lot of good linebackers in this league, so we're going to see some good ones this week between Lafayette and Lehigh. And, uh, you know, Danucci worries me a little bit because he can run to the football. Mm -hmm. He's going to play with emotion. He's a leader. He's going to tell everybody what to do, and you talked about some of those young guys. He's going to make sure they're in the right uh, position. They can play defense, and we saw them jump on a lead against Holy Cross. We saw them get turnovers early. Those are the things they're going to need to do, but between Danucci and uh, Pelletierian, I mean, that's a guy that's got to make plays, and he's becoming on as a young kid, coming on as a playmaker in the secondary. I, if I were them, I'd worry a little bit about their corners against some of our wide receivers, and then obviously our big tight ends. There's a lot of weapons on Lafayette's side, a lot of things for Lehigh to deal with, so they're going to have to find a way, and I think Danucci gives them an advantage defensively. Not sure if this is our last behind the mic, but it very well could be, and we certainly want to t talk about the accolades that this football team deserves. And I'm going to start with the coaching staff. I think every position, every position on this football team has improved. Uh, I, I think so as well. You start with the quarterback. You start with the running backs. They've been fantastic. You start with Kevin Bauman, the offensive line coach. What, who could do a better job from a turnaround like we've had the last couple of years with an offensive line like this? And then think about what uh, Michael St. Germain on defense has done with, with six or seven freshmen up front replacing a Malik Cam, replacing a Jair Stevens. I mean, these are guys that made plays last year to end the Lehigh game. So these guys up front, rolling them through, uh, and then the leadership they're getting from the uh, the group behind them, obviously, with the linebackers. And then the secondary's been very good as well. Yeah, Dubois. I mean, they basically played bend but don't break. Throw it in front of us. You're not going to throw it over our heads. What a great game plan that was. You get Sekou White back there running things. Um, you know, I think our corners, you know, you don't have in Tang Tang, but you get guys to step up like Smallwood. You get guys to step up like Edwards. These kids are, are in the mix. They're playing well. Um, you know what, from, like you said, from a standpoint of whether it's the tight end coach, whether it's the O-line coach, special teams have been good. The safeties have been good. I mean, the, the coaching job has been unbelievably outstanding, and it all goes back to John Troxel. Absolutely does. Uh, and I don't think we can underestimate, it was proven last week, the underestimate the value of Jamar Curtis. Yeah, I mean, it was so evident in that game from you and I watching the game in the stands, his ability to get first downs, not a big kid, but runs with power and strength and low to the ground, tough to get underneath him, and then he's explosive. And he gets that explosive play when you need it. You're 17 to 10, you're on your own 16 yard line from a poor kickoff return, and he busts one 73 yards. And basically everybody now can breathe again, and like especially you and me. So Jamar Curtis has just been phenomenal, over 1,100 yards rushing, he leads the league fourth or fifth in the nation in rushing. He's just been the difference. And I thought I saw a little extra pep in his step, so that week off may have really helped Jamar. Even in his post-game interview, he said he wasn't tired. Yeah. He was ready to go. Uh, and I think you might be right. The week off probably yeah. uh, didn't hurt him at all. Looking down, certainly uh, everything revolves around the quarterback, and Dean DeNoble just does not make mistakes. No, he does. He does. He makes the right decisions mm -hmm. all the time. He, he jumps through the pocket and with his hands on the football, with his eyes downfield. He makes plays. Last week, a few plays with his legs. I thought he could do more of that. He may have to do that this week as well. Use his legs just to extend drives. Um, but he makes the right decision. He's very accurate with the football. He throws a phenomenal deep ball, especially inside the red zone. So being on the same page, the confidence that exudes with everybody. You know, so if I'm Elijah Stewart and I'm running a fade, I know where the ball's going to be. If I'm a check down, I know where the ball's going to be. So he's done a phenomenal job running this. He doesn't have big, big numbers, mm -hmm. but he's running a team that's 8-2. and two. Yeah, That's exactly right. We're running the football more than we ever have in the last bunch of years. And he, he throws the ball when necessary, and he's unbelievable unbelievably accurate. I think 76% last week in the football game against Fordham. They've got a great receiving core, and core is the right word to use. There's so many good receivers that we put out there. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, obviously Stuart Carasia chips in, and then you add Persing, who didn't get a lot of catches last week. That's been a factor. The two big tight ends, both with Holmes and Gilbert right there. You get check downs out of the backfield. You add in a Troy Bruce who can come in and be good in the running game. I mean, there's so many factors. Those wide receivers have been really just – just fun to watch and again Elijah Stewart when he catches the ball in the open field you know you got to tackle that kid and you got to make sure that he stay you keep him in front of you so that's why he gets a lot of those short throws and then all of a sudden you cheat up a little bit boom and he's got the speed to get by you so um, again being on the same page with those wide receivers I, I love him you know Elijah Stewart's a guy that could go off in this game at any time for 10 12 catches 100 yards it's going to be interesting uh, at the end of the game to see you know 
all of the guys that make contributions on the Lafayette side. I think at the beginning of the year, we were a little concerned about our front four. Well, we don't have to be. We've got a front eight. We've got guys that run in and out all the time. They stay fresh. Everybody knows about our great linebacking core. And as I mentioned, I think our secondary played their best football game of the year against a very good Fordham team uh, last week. Mike, it's hard to believe we're young. I mean, we start 13 underclassmen, so uh, the future is bright. But I don't think we want to look too far in the future. This game is about Lafayette-Lehigh. We yeah. know what's at stake. We know that there could be another week of football should they win this right. football game. But I, they have to just think Lehigh. Yeah, I think so as well. Just finish the job. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. The, the, you throw everything out, what you've done in the past, it means nothing if you don't get this game. So they need to focus on what – uh, Lafayette Lehigh is all about. I'm sure Marco's doing that. Some of the other seniors are letting them know um, how to handle the week around campus, how to handle the week in class, how to handle the week when they come to practice, the e extra preparation. You know, John Trox will talk to me before the game about the details, taking care of the details, and that's what they did against right. Fordham, understanding, watching a little bit of extra film, getting an edge on what they're going to do. If Lafayette plays their football game, if they can run the football, they can throw the ball underneath effectively off the play action and then play defense, you know, like they've done all year long, you know, again, this is a game that Lafayette should win, but again, then you add the emotional part into it. And I always talk about this being a, a five senses type of game. Mm -hmm. It's everything from your eyes, to your touch, to your feel, to your taste. I mean, it's all about it. It gets everything going. And this is a game where Lafayette needs, uh, needs to finish the job. And I'm sure John's stressing that. Well, if everybody's as pumped up as Mike and I are, then certainly it's going to be a great football game. We are looking forward to it. We want to thank you if you spent all year with us behind the mic and certainly inside the huddle with Mike. 12 o'clock noon is the kickoff. It's on ESPN+. Plus. It's also on the Lafayette Sports Network. We know that you'll be there and you'll watch. So thank you for watching us all year long. For Mike, I'm Gary. We're behind the mic.